Well, first of all, thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to see you, and uh, we're really glad that you're here. Thanks for having us. Um, now, we should mention that you came today from Los Angeles, and I'm assuming that uh, it was an opportunity. Is that true? From, from New York? Were you meeting with uh, Doug Goldstein? Is that why you were here in North America? Or? No, he came over to see us. We met him in Manchester. He come over with me, Gaffin, you know, the come because we'd never met him before. In 91, we met him and they said, give us an LP as good as your last one whenever in your time. And so, we, you know, we had to say hello to him. What's Three and a half years later. <laughs> Fuck you, man. So, um, presumably then you were talking about different marketing strategies and uh, maybe tour plans? They were. <laughs> Do you want to shed any light on what they were sort of talking about? Is there, is there plans afoot it to come over? It talks a lot about food. They eat a lot of food in LA, you know. <laughs> you, you said like you were in Thai New York. Food? you like Chinese food? you like this food? Have you eaten yet? Would you like to eat later? Yeah. It's an awfully long way to come, but uh, to find out about food, but okay. So let's talk about the record, shall we? We're really, really glad that it's out, and uh, a lot of people, I guess, uh, were waiting a long time. Was there any trepidation on your part as to uh, uh, how it would be, how people would respond to it, or did you feel completely confident from the get-go? Well, if we liked something, we expect everyone else to, so we didn't have any worries. True. Um, certainly, uh, some people had sort of in terms of, of critically, uh, rather than pending, spending a lot of attention on the, the actual music, people seem to look at it from the barometer of how long it took to make or how long it was between records. Uh, did you feel sort of hard done by by that? Did you think that was sort of unfair? No, we had a good time. It's okay, easy. They can write what they want. Did you expect a critical backlash? No, I expected everyone to say, oh, this is the best LP for time. We've done it. <laughs> <laughs> um, certainly, John, uh, you're responsible for uh, most of what's on the record, and there seems to be a lot of emphasis no, on, no. well, musically, certainly you are. Just the guitars. <laughs> <laughs> and writing the songs. Yeah. So that would really amount to most of it. No, I don't think so. Well, there seems to be some emphasis... Couldn't have done it on my own. Really. <laughs> Am I dying here? <laughs> um, my point was that there seems to be an awful lot of emphasis on creating moods and creating a, a sort of a sonic landscape, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and I find it really interesting the way that it's come together. What sort of things were you listening to, if anything, uh, when you were recording? Or do you try to cut yourself off from other music? Uh, Fred McDowell. Listen to him a lot. Beck. Um, Ian played a lot of rap. Any groups in particular? Leaders of the New School. Son of Berserk. Paris. Craig Mack. Biggie Smalls. Um, Black Sheep. Black Moon. Um, Cut your ranks and all them, Capel and Barry Salmond, Garnet Silk, the old Jamaican singers. Hmm. Um, you recorded in Wales, and I'm wondering um, if one of the reasons that you decided to do that was to sort of seclude yourself a little bit from England and from the English scene, uh, if that was part of your reasoning to get into a place that was a little bit further away. Oh, we live in the city, so it's nice to go in the country and you know, breathe fresh air, streams. Buzzards flying about, foxes and shit. <laughs> I had read actually Badges that. Badgers and that, seen a bad you know. Would you say it had an impact on the music, your state of mind, being sort of relaxed in that respect? Most of them. I'd also read that um, some of you have moved to Wales, is that true? I've got an house there. I didn't move there, I've got an house there. <coughs> but I've not seen it, you know, because I've been in the studio, I've seen my family there, my friends there, it's in the mountains. So you see him on the right. beach. Yeah. It's infested with mice as well. <laughs> Might be wise to get an exterminator for that one, I think. Um, there is a hidden track on the record as well, an uncredited oh. track. Uh, track, I guess, 90, actually, it is. Uh, what was the reasoning behind that? It made us laugh. <laughs> That's why it went on the record, anyway. We stayed in a bed and breakfast, and it was an old guy about eight, so he used to make mandolins and pianos and all that. And it was just covered in mandolins and violins and guitars, so after that I'd say we used to play at night. 
for the buzz, you know, the four of us that I'd say we'd play, that we'd go in the studio. So one night we taped it, and that's the first folk and jazz. First music. Was it also perhaps with a mind of kind of a bonus for your fans who would spend more time investigating the record? Because most people, you know, might not expect to find it. It's for those that are stoned and then they play it and they... <laughs> <laughs> wake them up all of a sudden. Um, there was a good deal of secrecy that uh, uh, surrounded delivering the single to Radio 1. It was brought in uh, so it could be played with security and then promptly taken out again. What was the reasoning behind that? Can't me. No reasoning? Just a I whim? Don't, I don't know why. Happened. Ian? I didn't know what happened. <laughs> I find that dubious, but... I didn't know what happened until after it was done. So you, what you're saying is that you're really not in control of any of the business aspects of your career, that you leave that to someone else? Is that business? Mm, possibly. We didn't want to send the tape through the post, you know. So someone said, oh, we sent you tape, your record, in a security van. We went, yeah, good one. I had also um, read that the cherubs that are... Uh, the stone cherubs that are uh, pictured on the record. Uh, there's been some problems of people defacing them. Um, Stole them, yeah, they took them. No, they didn't deface them, they just ripped them off the wall. Incredible, incredible. So have you made, like, any sort of a reward to get them back? Do you care about it? Do you find it amusing? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. I can't the where they are, yeah, they're right. What's that, Ian? You should have left them. So they shouldn't have done it. Well, maybe we could go to some questions from our audience. Well, maybe they can get somewhere. Go right ahead. Okay, I've got a question for John, actually. Um, you seem to be influenced quite a bit by Jackson Pollock in your artwork. Uh, are there any other artists that have influenced you, like Jasper Johns or Kadinsky or somebody? Yeah, both those. Yeah. So you mostly seem to be into the abstract expressionist era. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to write a book? It's for Ian. Um, do you feel you've created an album better than What's Going On, Marvin Gaye? No, not yet. <laughs> this is for John. I, I just want to know um, how long you've been playing guitar and if you're like classically trained or you just taught yourself everything. Uh, I got most of it from a book by Harvey Vincent. Yeah. How long have you been playing now in total? Um, well, I'm 32, started when I was 14. Three Failed in math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Um, I noticed in your song, Driving South, you have a lyric about going down on the crossroads. I was just wondering if you're influenced by early blues or later blues. There's yeah. a lot of them devils out there. We come across loads of them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> They either want to sell you guns, or give you an ounce of crack, or, you know what I mean, whatever. Any more? Yeah, this is for Ian. Uh, where do you think you'll be in five years? <laughs> if it's 1999 and it's the big New Year's rave and all that, yeah. <laughs> Things that have to be sorted out, so everyone can have a raid. Luckily, there's a billion in it. Um, one thing that uh, springs to mind that uh, certainly if you're considering touring, um, REM uh, tickets went on sale uh, this past week, and a lot of people were sort of upset by the, the price of tickets, and it seems that concert tickets are getting more and more expensive and prohibitively expensive for the people who really you know, want to go to the shows the most. Uh, do you have any feelings on that? And do you have any sort of a mandate to try to keep ticket prices down once you go out on tour? Yeah, we do. We're not greedy people. We're not out to make a killing. How much are they charging? On these shows in rich countries, you want to go and play poor countries, y'all. How much are they charging? It was, uh, top tickets here in Toronto were $55 Canadian, which is about 38 US. So, uh, it's a lot of money. Mm. Yeah. Um, also, it would be fair to say that um, uh, going back a little bit, I mean, you guys really changed a lot of rules 
uh, in England and uh, a lot of people were very sorry that you got caught up in the, the legal problems that you did and it seemed to really delay uh, a natural evolution that was going along. But since then, of course... Sorry's was the heads of record companies and chairman and managing directors. Every record company, every head said it was a disgrace that we won. That bands shouldn't be winning these things. They were the ones that are the most sorry. But you did win, so I mean, you set a certain precedent um, that, I mean, a band can, you know, come back and, and if they were tied to a difficult contract, that it's possible to be renegotiated or let go. No, because you have to have a lot of money to go to court to fight it. Geffen Records put the money up, you can only buy justice, you know. Geffen Records put the money up for us to go and do it, so if a band have got a big company, they'll put money up for them, they can, they can get away from the contracts. Mm. But, I mean, obviously, it showed an awful lot of faith on the part of Geffen to want to do that. So, that must have been kind of a good thing. I'm wondering through all of this, you know, how it was that you were able to, to keep together, the four of you. Uh, I mean, the temptation, I'm sure, at some points to throw up your hands and walk away must have been fairly great. No? Well, we're all class friends. I'm sure we'd miss each other. Gotta keep going. <laughs> And there's been a lot of bands that they have... They just said, take your time, you know. 91, they said, take your time. Whenever you want to do it. So, we didn't start till 93. <coughs> start recording until 93. When you went into the studio, at what stage of readiness were the songs at? Had you been sitting on these songs for a number of years? Were they newer songs? Most of them in 1991, yeah. <coughs> so, it must have been very difficult, I would think to sort of wait all that time. It's difficult when you live in a tower block and you've got ten kids and you've got no job. It's difficult when you live on the scene and you haven't got anything. It's not difficult if someone's paying to make music and say, take your time, do what you want, and you're living up. What about uh, John Leckie? He uh, didn't... He didn't have the heart to finish. do it, he says, so he went. Any hard feelings about that? No, not much. No, you can tell someone if they're great, so you can build someone up, you can build them up, but if they haven't got it, then you know. You got too concerned with money. Lost a bit of soul. But where would that come from? Money meaning, like, taking a percentage of the record, or...? Yeah, he was arguing the toss about contracts all the time. He wanted insurance in case the record didn't sell, that like he would make some money on it. When we first met him, he was on the dole, and he just said, let's go and make a record, you know, we love your music, let's do it. This time he wanted money to make sure that if he didn't sell, he, he could. Do you know what I mean? He's like 40-odd, and he wants a little nest egg, and... Bless him, you know, but he let us down. It's too bad. But there were other projects. I mean, he finished a, a record with Radiohead, I believe, as one thing that he eventually did, so... I don't know. Too bad. Um, do you think that you've been treated fairly on the whole by the British press? Don't care. <laughs> Honestly. So then it was sort of happenstance that you didn't end up doing any interviews with them for this record? No, we had a rumour that we were going to do the big issue and thought it was a good idea, so we did it. And there wasn't any sort of kind of statement in that, any kind of a political statement of going to... Well, we uh, didn't intend to wind the press up. We got upset because we didn't talk to him. That was the net result. Though. Some of them were like 40 odd grown men, you know. But I think that it's important in a country like England where radio is fairly restricted to try to get the word out to Stone Roses fans that, you know, you have a new record or a new single. The press, you know, they ignored us when we started up. We'd be playing at 3,000 in Manchester. They ignored us, and as soon as people started coming to see us, then they wanted to jump on it. So they think that they create something, but they don't they just follow what people want to do, you know. What do you think of Oasis? <laughs> They're our protégés now, we love them. Sincerely? Yeah, you know. Keep that boy off the powders and they'll go. <laughs> Are there any other bands from the, the current scene that are recording now that you would consider friends or contemporaries, or are you at a sort of a distance? I don't know people I know, Mays Liam and, and uh, Happy Mondays, I don't know anyone else. We met back the other day, he's nice. And what's the status uh, of Happy Mondays? I mean, uh, is there any talk of perhaps getting yeah, back together? Yeah, they Black Grape now. Sean's doing Black Grape. Just Sean and Bez. Bez on keyboards. Kid from Rufus, like, the rap assassins. 
and um, they've got a drummer, a guitarist, add funk <coughs> sort of game. Mm. Excellent. So, uh, what's next for you guys? I mean, are you just going to put your entire weight behind touring uh, for the next little while, or are you already looking at perhaps putting out, did you maybe accumulate enough material that you can put out another record straight away, or what's the goal, what's the plan? Uh, we're going to tour all year right on the road and get in the studio whenever the opportunity arises. Do a live LP this year. That's interesting. That'd be great. Um, just to get back to your uh, artwork for a minute, um, have you ever had any kind of a, a showing in a gallery? Would that be something that you might like to sort of go into or experiment with more? No, not really. That was auctioned for the new album cover recently. That's as close as I've got to showing anything. And it's not a particular ambition? No. Any other questions from the audience? Do you think we should? No. 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 Not this time. If we can find him, yeah. <laughs> Would you consider taking any offers to go out with another group, albeit on a co-headline bill, but is there uh, any group that you might be interested I'd like in? I'd say the What's Profits. Three old guys are like 55 and, and they put the first rap tune out in 69. I think that when a lot of people will be off their heads, you know, on the shows. So, yeah, no, they've done it before the last Poets. Two years before the last poets. Bring them on, everyone's wrecked. Anyone else? Um, it was kind of m mentioned in the big issue that if you were going to do concerts, you were going to announce it the night of. Are you going to go ahead and do things in like England, that? Yeah. Just in England, like. Yeah. So you're for sure. <laughs> <laughs> We <laughs> <laughs> should be in it. No one wants to see us sitting here talking, drinking, and eating chips. Not everyone wants to see us playing it. You know. Yeah. yeah. Said it. Anyone? She has no question. <coughs> Hi. I just want to say that I'm really glad that the album's out. I really like it. And um, on a lot of the songs, there's um, a lot of acoustic guitars. Is, were you guys in a lighter mood, or is there any reason behind a lot of acoustic, or are you going to bring that on tour? <laughs> no, I don't think we'll tour that kind of sound, no. Sorry? I don't think we'll take it on tour. I'd like to play loud. And what the album I really like. Pardon? It adds a lot to the songs on that, no. particular songs. Does that mean you're not going to do that plug, then? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if that's it, 